Welcome back to this special edition of Hannity. The left has a track record of bowing to dictators, but President Trump maintains a peace through strength policy, and that was on full display this morning. Trump tweeted, quote, I have asked Secretary of State Mike Pompeo not to go to North Korea at this time because I feel we are not making sufficient progress with respect to the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. Additionally, because of our much tougher trading stance with China, I do not believe they are helping with the process of denuclearization as they were, once were, despite the U.N. sanctions, which are in place. Secretary Pompeo looks forward to going to North Korea in the near future future, most likely after our trading relationship with China is resolved. In the meantime, I would like to send my warmest regards and respect to Chairman Kim. I look forward to seeing him soon. Joining us now with a reaction, national security and global affairs analyst Morgan Ortega and Fox News contributor and retired CIA senior intelligence officer Dan Hoffman. Okay, Morgan, I'll start with you. Yesterday, uh, Mike Pompeo is going to North Korea along with a special envoy indicating that we're ready to continue serious negotiations with uh, the North Korea. Now today something very unusual happened when the president asked uh, uh, Secretary of State Pompeo not to go. What happened and how do you read this? Well, good, ev good evening, Judge Nadine. Great to see you, as always. I Thanks. think what we're seeing happen is that Mike Pompeo, the Secretary of State, briefed the president today, and it seems that the president got fed up and was frustrated what, with what he sees as a lack of progress on these talks. And the president, we saw, did this in the lead-up to the Singapore talks, where he canceled the meeting with Kim Jong-un, and then the North Koreans came back to the table in a way that was sufficient from the president's perspective, and so the meeting went forward. So I think what we're really seeing here is so many different... Uh, geopolitical things at play, right. Judge Janine. We're seeing the trade talks happen with the Chinese, which I think are, are, be, are very tough. They did not seem to make a lot of progress over the past few days. The Chinese are playing hardball, but so is this president more than any other president has. We're also seeing something, a very strange dynamic that I think that we need to be aware of, and that's the South Koreans. And President Moon is the, for, for lack of a better word, I mean, he's the, he's the Barack Obama of Asia. And I think that we have to be very careful about what the South Koreans are doing. They made some speeches last week, last week in which they're trying to build this, this inter-Korean peninsula, almost similar to a European Union in Asia. They want that land bridge to China and to the rest of Asia. So I'm worried that the South Korean president and his very liberal stance is trying to push a position that is counter to U.S. interests in the region. Dan, how do you see what's going on in, uh, in North Korea with Kim Jong-un? In his own country, what are the dynamics that are going on? there? Well, you know, first of all, we've submitted uh, proposals for a pathway and a timeline for denuclearization, and thus far, uh, Kim Jong-un has resisted those. He's trying to exact maximum economic gain without giving up uh, the nuclear arsenal on which his regime's security depends. And that really does reflect the fact that his economy is in free fall. He needs immediate help, and he has to play to his own uh, stakeholders in the military. You may recall that just before the summit, Kim Jong-un removed three top defense officials, including his chief of intelligence and his minister of defense. Uh, he's got to be very concerned and aware of the reaction from his own, for lack of a better word, military base. He's been ruthless about suppressing his own people and ruthless about killing those who get in his way, including his half-brother in Malaysia. Well, you know, but if Kim Jong-un, I'm going to stay with you, Dan, for a minute. If he's in a free fall, the economy, um, how does he juggle all of this? It's a delicate balancing act, but he's getting a lot of help right now from China as well as from Russia. And that is, I agree with the president, that's the real challenge for us is we need to step up those sanctions. I think it might be a time for us to consider uh, reinstituting those military exercises just to put a little bit more pressure on Kim Jong-un, but also on China and Russia and show them that we're serious. Okay, so Morgan, I'm going to go back to you on what, what you uh, opened up with a couple minutes ago, and that is the interaction with China. I mean, how do we juggle that? 
It's an incredibly complex issue, but I think that the way uh, President Trump is countering China is the single most important thing that, from a foreign policy perspective that he will do in his presidency, Judge. See, we have not had the stomach to do what it takes to counter China, and we tend to look at North Korea and China. We look at trade. We look at sanctions. We look at these issues in silos, and I think what's really smart about what this administration is doing, and a lot of people would disagree with me on this, but I think the fact that, that we are looking at the Chinese looking at the theft of IP, looking at sanctions on North Korea, and trying to negotiate with them in a package, I think is a smart strategy. But mind you, this is not something that's going to happen that he's, that the President Trump is going to win in the next month, or maybe even the next year. This is something where we have to have sustained pressure against the Chinese, because most of the world thinks that when the going gets tough, that America cuts and runs. That's certainly our reputation for the last eight years. Look right. what happened in the Middle East. Look when, when Russia invaded uh, Ukraine, and President Obama Obama did nothing. Our reputation is that when it gets tough, we leave, and people don't believe that the President Trump is necessarily going to keep the required pressure on China and on North Korea. I believe he will. I believe this is a president who means what he says, and I think that the Chinese and the North Koreans are wrong to test him. And, and Dan, what do you think the long-term game, uh, long game plan should be with respect to uh, North Korea and China by the United States? Well, I think Morgan's points are, are spot on. The North Korea challenge for us is intertwined with everything else in the region. And there's no question that China and Russia would like to reduce, if not eliminate altogether, our military presence and our influence in the region. And so we do need to demonstrate we're in it for the long haul. We also have to have realistic expectations. One more point, Judge. Uh, that I would highlight is when the president was making this decision, he had Andy Kim in the room. Andy is the chief of the CIA's Korea um, Mission Center, along with Secretary Pompeo. This shows the president making um, a very deliberate decision based on intelligence and, uh, and the best diplomatic advice he could get from Secretary Pompeo. And I think we should be reassured by that process, which was spot on. All right. And, and just a few sec uh, seconds left, Morgan. What about, um, you know, the satellite imagery that seems to indicate that they are still working on, uh, that North Korea is still working on its nuclearization? Don't they know we, we could see that stuff? <laughs> yeah, you would think they would know that by now for sure. And we also saw that Secretary Pompeo went to the U.N. just a few weeks ago and said and called out the Russians and called out the Chinese for these ship-to-ship -ship oil right. transfers in which they were evading sanctions. So I think that the president might need to consider going back to the maximum pressure campaign. I think clearly from his tweets today that he's still trying to keep a relationship with Kim Jong-un because from okay. his perspective, Kim Jong-un promised denuclearization, but might be time to go back to maximum pressure. Clearly. All right. Uh, Great discussion. Thank you, guys.